It's Wednesday, it's morning, Joe and the Pro, I'm the Prez, and uh, one of the best is with us, Ralph Michaels from wagertalk.com. Uh, Ralph, how are you, my friend? Doing great, you know, the first couple rounds of the tournament certainly were exciting, we've seen a lot of chalk, but, you know, while the Cinderella, while the Cinderella stories are great, having these elite teams now facing off in the Sweet 16 is going to make this one of the most memorable tournaments there's been. Yeah, I mean, you know, there wasn't a ton of drama in the first round. I mean, we had some great endings, but there, I don't remember any last-minute shots, although, my God, had that shot have fallen against Duke, that would have been one for the ages. Uh, yeah, that game, and you had the New Mexico State game where the guy passes up a layup to pass it out for a three-pointer where he could have tied the game. Yeah, you know... I don't have a fundamental problem with that play, to be honest with you. Uh, and, it, and it actually turned out to be better for them. They had three free throws to win the game instead of to tie the game. The guy missed it. And then they got the ball back to win the game. So everything fell correctly for them to win the game, making that play actually look right. Uh, the, they just didn't uh, execute. You know, I, I agree because... It's also the offense they ran all year. They shot as many threes as anyone. That's what they do. They get into the lane. They dish it out. So you have to stick by your guns that got you there, and that's what he did. Ralph, uh, let's lament for a second. I was the $2 Tuesday yesterday. I had Miami, uh, the Heat, minus five and a half. Man, I just, I didn't even sleep, dude. Like, in all seriousness, it's not, it's not about the loser, me losing money. I mean, Jesus, Ralph, I lose money, I win money, I lose money, I win money. I mean, it's a roller coaster of extraordinary proportions. But man, you know, you go and you win both your five stars in college basketball this past weekend. You come into yesterday on a nine and two NBA run. Everything is falling in, into place. And our $2 Tuesdays, uh, those are our big sales days. I mean, that's when, you know, 10 times the customers that normally play you jump on board. And my play didn't only lose, it lost outright. And I just, I can't cope with it. Like, I don't know how you deal with it when you lose these five unit plays and so many customers are counting on you. But for me, it's the worst, like literally the worst, like, I was texting Johnny last night. I was nauseous. Yeah, you know, Marco, Dave, and I talked about it on the podcast. And really, I mean, you've assembled such a unique crew of cappers. And the difference is we don't put up plays to make money. We put up plays because we're betting those plays. We put up plays because we want our customers to win. And they are heartfelt. Every win and every loss is gut-wrenching for us personally, and that's the type of care and pride we take in our plays. And that really is why Wager Talk is so different than, than most sites out there. For that sentiment, for you know me having a play on Monday, a 5% play, that just it was a team that just never showed up in West Virginia. They suspended a player, didn't know about it, and just you know the rest of the team just didn't show up. And those things happen, but when you have that many people on, it, it's a double punch to the gut, but... You know, uh, it makes us better handicappers, and I hope it, it translates to our, our viewers here that, uh, you know, we just don't put up plays. We put up plays with pride, with the expectations to win, and we take each and every loss personally. Yeah, and it's why we don't do games of the years or games of the months or any of that stuff. I mean, it's, you know, all the plays are very similar to each other, 3%, 4%, and 5%. Uh, we're never asking anybody to step out. Uh, you know, one of the we had a comment yesterday uh, from one of our listeners who asked, you know, Prez, how do I uh, get a bankroll like you guys? You know, if I'm starting with such a small bankroll. Uh, and the answer to that is you don't. You, you, you just it's irrelevant. If I have a hundred thousand dollar bankroll, if Ralph has a million dollar bankroll and if you you know, person who commented have a one thousand dollar bankroll. Ultimately, we're all still betting the same amount of money. We're betting a percentage of that bankroll, and we're betting three percent, four percent, and five percent. And you just grind it out. Don't get caught up in 
you know, how do I make as, how do I get a bankroll as large as you? I don't know. Take your old bankroll, throw it on an 11 team parlay. You'll have a bankroll as large as me or zero, most likely zero. You know, one correction, Prez, we don't have games of the year. We do have games of the month, which are a little bit of a standout thing, but I just wanted to correct you on that. Statement. Yeah. Yeah, it's more of a title, though, Ralph. You know, we use it as a title, but the games of the month, you know, when, when our regular customers who are buying our long-term packages are being asked to bet 3% of their bankroll, 4% of their bankroll, and 5% of their bankroll, we're never asking them to step out. We're never saying, okay, this play is a 10%er, this play is a 20%er. It's grind them all the way. And, you know, I said to Johnny last night after I lost the Miami game, sports betting is like how I play poker. I don't want to be all in every five hands. I, I, I don't, don't give me aces. Don't give me kings. I don't want queens or jacks. I want 10 jacks suited, king, queen suited, ace, king suited. I want six and seven, seven and eight. I want to grind, Ralph. I, w I don't want, I'm too old for that heart palpitations of having a pair of aces and two guys going all in in front of me and then having to call knowing that even though I have the best hand, I'm still a very short favorite to win. Uh, I, I just let us grind. Yeah, you know, the key to all these people, and, and March Madness brings out a lot of new betters, like the Super Bowl does. And, you know, it's this. We use 3 4 and 5% for a reason. It's because if you go 2 and 1, you better at least break even. If you win 6 units, 6%, 6 and you lose 5.5%, you're making a half a unit or breaking even. Anytime you go two and one and people lose money, that's when you shouldn't be sports gambling. Well, and it happens all the time. I mean, on puck time, a couple of days ago, we had another person post uh, that they went five and one and threw their ticket in the garbage. Parlayed everything to the, win to the loser, right? Yep. Yeah. Calgary. Calgary against Detroit. Anyway, Ralph, let's get to it, brother. It's Morning Joe and the Pro. Uh, what I want to do first is talk about what's going on at wagertalk.com. And then we're going to look at two games for Thursday and two games for Friday. Uh, all college basketball. I mean, it's such an exciting time right now. But also, baseball is starting. Uh, I, I, I do really well betting baseball, Ralph. Uh, where are you at with that? You know, I'm I'm just getting into baseball. I'm not, you know, to me, I, I'm very limited in my baseball plays. Uh, it's not my passion like college football and college basketball. I put it fourth on the list. But with that said, you know, we do the first pitch newsletter that'll be starting after the first week. That'll be free at Wager Talk every day. Hey, 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 hey! You can't call it the first pitch. Whereas we talked about this last night, drinking with uh, Brian and Marco. First pitch was the newsletter that you had at Wager Talk all last year, each and every day for free that I put out. Okay, fine. You know what, Ralph? We're a team. We'll call the show first pitch. We'll call the newsletter first pitch. We love you. That's What's right. going on at wagertalk.com? Uh, the play today period is Carmine Bianco. He's got a 5% uh, NHL side play. Uh, his NHL season has been absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Uh, he's had some outstanding runs. He's up massive profit for his clients. And he's got a 5% play tonight in hockey. Uh, it's regularly, uh, the 5% plays are $30 at wagertalk.com. Uh, Carm's play is 10 bucks for all you listeners. Use the promo code CARM10. That's C A R M 10. Uh, so head over to wagertalk.com and check it out. Uh, and don't sleep on Kyle Anthony's UFC, Ralph. We spoke about this yesterday with Drew Martin. 69% in his last 14 months of betting UFC as a play up uh, for a Saturday. Uh, and that's exciting. And we've got so much going on in the Sweet 16. Uh, Tony Finn's got a 5% play. Uh, I've got a 5% play. Uh, my 5% play goes on Friday, and Marco coming into the, to 
uh, the Sweet 16 on a 9-1 and one college basketball run has a 5% play up for Thursday. And you know what his loss was? I can't remember. His loss was a video that we did, and Marco and I bet a Crab Lake dinner on Oregon, Wisconsin. So Marco reminded me yesterday, he's 9-1, and one, and his only loss in the tournament was a video bet to me, and uh, he's very, very sore about that subject. I'll make sure to mention it on Friday. <clears throat> Uh, let's go, brother. Uh, I'm just going to throw the game. Let, let, I'm going to throw some games out at you. Let's start with Gonzaga. Uh, they're playing against Florida State. Uh, the Zags look great right now. Uh, nobody can keep them down. They're scoring a ton of points. Uh, 83 against Baylor. Uh, they almost covered that game, Ralph. I did bet Gonzaga there. Uh, they missed by a bucket. They are now minus... Seven and a half uh, against Florida State. The over and under is 146 and a half. And look, Florida State, man, they look great against Murray. State. But the bottom line is, I think these two teams are in different leagues. Uh, I, I, you know, I think we're going to have, oh, and, and the backdrop foul. That's okay. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of this in the Sweet 16, uh, you know, with a team like Auburn and a team like Florida State. Uh, and conversely, a team, you know, and also a team like Virginia Tech. Uh, now we're getting into the big boy territory. Uh, I like Gonzaga here, minus seven and a half. Well, I've been on the Zags for the tournament. I am heavily invested in the Zags to win the national champion. Got him back at nine to one a while ago. But in this case, I actually disagree with you. I like Florida State. And the reason is this. Florida State is such a unique team. They have 10 players that average 10 or more minutes, between 10 and 32 minutes. They come at you at waves. They have guards, 6'4 and 6'5. They are long. They completely change the passing lanes. Now, people are going to say, Gonzaga lost to Florida State in the Sweet 16 last year. That doesn't mean crap to me. Can you be more motivated than being in the Sweet 16? Saying, oh, we lost to a team, we have revenge. It's the Sweet 16. There is no more motivation than being there than that. Leonard Hamilton for the Seminoles, 6-1 and one APS as a March Madness dog. I think uh, the Seminoles hang close. I like the Zags to win the game in advance, but grabbing that many points with, with this type of Florida State team, uh, I am going to back the Seminoles. Uh, he's Ralph Michaels from Cal Sports. You find him at wagertalk.com. I'm the Prez. It's Morning Joe and the Pro, and everybody, don't forget, we have a baseball show starting April 8th. It's called First Pitch. It's exactly the same format as Puck Time. I'll have one to two guests on per day. We'll take apart the entire board. Um, the first two first pitches are already up. They're our preview show. You can find them uh, at our YouTube channel, Wager Talk TV. And Ralph, we just crossed... 20,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. So stay tuned, everybody. We're going to be giving away some uh, some stuff next week in celebration. What I mean, how generous. A free $20 coupon. That's an amazing gift. We were talking about it on videos. We were close to reaching that threshold yesterday starting videos. We mentioned it on a few videos, and those subscribers jumped on board. Uh, Ralph, Texas Tech... Uh, against Michigan. I think this is a fascinating game. Uh, I think this could come right down to the, this could be our, our buzzer beater. Uh, Michigan is minus one and a half. Uh, Texas Tech looked really good. Uh, set, they just blew Buffalo away. They blew both teams away. I mean, they haven't even, they, they haven't even been, I think maybe the first minute of each game is the only time it's been close. But Michigan the same way completely dominated Florida. Uh, you know, we've got a situation here where Texas Tech can score a ton of points uh, and Michigan is one of the best defenses in the country. And I think, you know, we have a low total here at 126, not our lowest. But, you know, for me, Ralph, I think the play here is on the over. I think that regardless of how good Michigan is, they're going to struggle keeping this TT team down. Uh, you're laughing, so I guess you're on the under. 
Yeah, you knew it. We were disagreeing again. I, I think the total. I think the total should be 117, 118. I think there's seven or eight points of value. You have the number one and number two teams defensively efficient deficiency wise. You have teams that are two of the slowest tempo teams. And to me, I mean, for those that follow college basketball in depth, this game has the best personnel matchup you will have out of any game. Charles Matthews for Michigan missed the last three games of the regular season, only played 20 some minutes in the Big Ten tournament. He's now back and healthy. He is one of the best defenders in college basketball. He's going to be matched up to my player of the year, Jared Culver, who's just phenomenal. He's going to be a top five or six draft pick in the NBA. Again, my best player in college basketball this season. And when you look at Michigan, you know, what concerns me about the Wolverines is this. Michigan State and Texas Tech are very similar. Guard play, slow play, great defenses. Michigan led Michigan State 41-29, uh, 35-23, and 51-45. Late in the game, they got outscored 36-19, 52-28, 32-19. Michigan's offense really bogs down late in the game. They don't have that go-to score. So with Matthew slowing down Culver, the team slowing down in the second half, I, I believe there's value with the under. Well, I mean, we're allowed to disagree, brother. And, and, you know, we should talk about that really quickly because people say to us, you know, why, why do you disagree? How come you sell a pick on one side and another person sells a pick on the other side? And the bottom line is we all handicap differently and we all have our, our, our methods and our ways and our systems and we don't talk. You know, I, when have I ever called you and asked you what game are you on or, or should I bet this game or should I bet that game? And certainly you don't call me for that. <clears throat> I mean, from my perspective, Ralph, Michigan is a very methodical team. Uh, they like to use up the shot clock. Uh, they probably make 12 p passes before they even shoot the ball. But Texas Tech, you know, for however slow they play, this team scores. Uh, you go down their last 10 games, and, and I understand none of them were against Michigan. Uh, I understand that some of them were against fast teams. But, you know, 78, 72, 74, 80, 70, 81, 84, 91, 86, 78. There is no reason to think Texas Tech will not be able to get into the low 70s here. Uh, it's just a matter of who's going to dictate uh, does Texas Tech play down to Michigan's defense or will Michigan have to uh, speed up? And the interesting part of what you're saying is Michigan struggles to speed up at the end of the game and they struggle to close out. Uh, and listening to you, that leads me to think maybe Texas Tech plus one and a half might be the play because I don't see how they don't get into the high 60s. Well, I'm going to give just our, our listeners the flip side to you saying Texas Tech scored all those points. Michigan has allowed 61, 49, 55, 60, 49, and 53. So, again, there's there's one side. There's two Yeah, look, look at who they're playing, brother. I mean, you know, Florida, you know, Michigan State, which is a slow team, Minnesota, who couldn't hit threes until the first round, Iowa, Michigan State again. Granted, okay, well, we're going to disagree on it. But, you know, here's the key to me. If Jared Culver gets 20-plus points and has over seven assists, Texas Tech's going to win the game. If Matthews does the job I think he's going to do and keep Culver under 20, I think Michigan wins. So this is a game where I will look to live bet aside and see how Culver is running the offense or the offense is running through Culver early. If Matthews is doing the job I think he does early in the game, I might live bet Michigan. Uh, and live betting is is crucial. You know, I, I made most of my money last weekend on the halftime bets, actually. Well, you've got eight minutes because you've got more radio and more TV to do. So let's race through this. Uh, Al, talking about Michigan State, uh, we mentioned them a couple of times. Uh they're playing LSU here. You know, they had their scare against Bradley. I mean, they won by 10, but Bradley kept it close right to the final four or five minutes. 
They really laid the smack down on Minnesota. They won 70 to 50. LSU, a real great game against Maryland. Uh, they were leading the whole way. They let it slip. Uh, and then they pulled it out at the end. Uh, and another, and a close game against Yale as well. Uh, here we have Michigan State minus six. Uh, we have an over and under of 148 and a half. And rather than disagreeing with you, Ralph, I'm just going to ask you what you're playing. I am all over. Color me green. I am all over Sparty. Okay, well, then we don't disagree. Izzo, Izzo against an interim coach at LSU. Of course, Miles is still suspended. And the interim coach was a head coach at North Texas, so he's not like he doesn't have experience. But every coach has to step up and go up the ladder, one doing extra duties moving up. I give that in an, almost a five or a six point edge with Izzo coaching. You look at Michigan State, they went 15 and four this year against tournament teams. Those teams in the tournament, 15 and four against the spread. When Michigan State's coming off a game they won and covered in the tournament like they did the last game, they're 22-0, and 17-3-2 against the spread. LSU's only played seven defenses in the top 30 all year, let alone facing an elite team. This is the best defense they faced. Mismatch to me, it's Michigan State in a rout. Uh, Auburn and North Carolina. Uh, you know, North Carolina, just like Texas Tech, blowouts. Uh, they haven't been tested at all, and they've looked really good. 88 against Iona, 81 against Washington. Auburn just, you know, barely got out of the first round, but man, did they ever look good against Kansas. Here we have NC at minus five, a massive... Oh, excuse me, a massive total, 164 and a half. This will be the funnest game to watch. Uh, that is for sure. Uh, the question is, you know, is NC going to be able to cover this five? You know, for me, I like NC here. I think people are going to be looking to bet Florida State, uh, which we spoke about earlier, and I think they're going to be looking to bet Auburn, and I also think they're going to be looking to get to bet Virginia Tech. Uh, I think Auburn comes com comes crashing down to earth. Uh, I'm gonna go against you again. Sorry, I you know I look just at think these pipes, dude. Who goes it, against that? It'll it'll be fun. It'll be a beer bet, and we'll see who comes out of the two of the three we disagree. Hey, I, none of these are my plays up at wagertalk.com. I got a three pack for. Thursday and Friday, and none of these games are included. You know, to me, Auburn is almost the identical team of North Carolina. You're deep. You run the ball. Auburn's, Auburn had the most three-pointers of any team in college basketball. They were number three in turnover margin. Can North Carolina get pressed? Not really. Colby White is an elite point guard, six foot five. But Auburn comes in waves, like we said. And you look at North Carolina, yes, they're number six in tempo. Yes, they have a lot of guys that score. Yes, they put up a lot of points. But teams that give up over 75 points in a tournament have not had success. March Madness, SEC teams over ACC teams, 23-11 and 11 against the spread. SEC tournament winners, 13-4 and 4 ATS, 15-2 and 2 straight up. Both of those losses by less than four points, which is Auburn's getting over. So that would put the SEC winners 17-0 and 0 in that category. Um, I think Auburn has enough depth where they can keep pressing the pace. And if North Carolina gets out to a 10 point lead, Auburn's going to keep chucking those threes late, can get easily get a backdoor cover with this team because they're not going to be worn out. They had the four days rest. They are going to run to you and keep shooting up those threes. And how many times late in the game do you see a team up by seven or eight doesn't care those last few possessions. I think we're getting an SEC tournament champion with 10 players and, and good value at plus five against a non-top-20 defensive team. He's Ralph Michaels. I'm the Prez. That, my friends, is Morning Joe and the Pro. Ralph, thanks so much, brother. I mean, next week I'm not around. Uh, I'm taking my youngest daughter, my 15-and-a-half-year-old, uh, to Whistler. The weather is going to be spectacular. Uh, Marco will be hosting. Hopefully you'll come on. Uh, and listen, everybody, uh, CARM10, that's $10 for CARM's NHL play. Baseball in earnest, I guess, starts tomorrow. Uh, we are incredible at baseball, so head over to wagertalk.com. 
and check out our baseball guys. Uh, and baseball is the one sport where you got to buy our long-term packages. This is a grind from start to finish. And almost all of us make money in the sport. Brother, I know you've got a ton of shows going today. Be well and enjoy the Sweet 16. I know you're going away, so enjoy that too. Marco and I go on a golf stream for the Florida Derby Saturday. So it'll be exciting with our good friend Mark Lawrence. It'll be uh, it'll be a good time. Please send my love to Mark. Will do. Appreciate I, it. I uh, mean, you- I, like, in all seriousness, there are very few people in this industry that are as sincerely nice, kind, sweet as Mark Lawrence. I mean, a total, absolute legend in this space. Uh, and tell him I want to buy his database. Yeah, well, I'll mention it to him. Mark and I are going to have lunch with the uh, with the crew on Thursday, and we'll see him Saturday again at the Derby. He's got some friends coming in from Philly, and Joe Ranieri is also going to join us at the Derby. So it's going to be a, a big party for us on Saturday. Lobster Joe Ranieri. <laughs> Later, boys. See you. Make sure to watch Puck Time today. Thanks, Brad. Talk to you.